Statistics and Excel Dice Central Limit Theorem Example Problem Part Number 3 Get ready and some coffee because if we want to get futuristic we need statistics and Excel because a utopian future isn't given to us by some government communist scheme you get, the only way we get there is with hard work and dudes doing the data and dudettes can be doing the data too and data is what we do here we are and first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our accounting rocks product line if you're not crunching cords using excel you're doing it wrong a must-have product because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Excel, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point, just constructing the tables as we go from here or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint related to probability or statistics more broadly if you do have access to this workbook there are three tabs down below example practice blank example in essence the answer key the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less excel formatting the blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and we'll be continuing with the blank part of the worksheet practicing our excel tools as we continue Quick recap of what we have done thus far. We're looking at concepts related to the central limit theory, theorem, looking at a dice example. And you can kind of imagine a situation where we're going towards, in essence, infinite dice. That would be the entire population. And we're seeing what would happen if we take kind of like a sample of one dice and then two dice and then three dice and so on and so forth first analyzing the different combinations of outcomes we can get from one dice to two dice to three dice and then we're going to be looking at the averages uh, and that's what we'll start to do this time as we do that we've been practicing setting up our tables practicing creating our graphs practicing making our data uh, relevant so we can see what we want to see plotting two or three sets of data on the same graph which we have done with one dice and then two dice here and then we imagined what would happen if we had three dice and we basically said okay if we roll three dice what are the outcomes that we could have we summed up the different outcomes and these are the outcomes that we can get to and there are many different ways that we can get to those outcomes with three dice and then we plotted those outcomes and now we've got the one dice versus the two dice versus the three dice trying to populate it in such a way that we can get the idea the feel of the shape of the graph by making the same basic like area under uh the graph and then we went to four dice and say okay now we've got a yellow die an orange a red and a black summing that up and let's look at the results this time we switched it to a a line graph rather than a bar graph so that we can then plot the data and we can see the shape that is taking place as we add more dice finally we went to the green dice so now we have five dice green yellow orange red and black and we took that data and then plotted our five dice data trying to put it in such a ways that we can kind of equalize the data as we as we saw it down here so it's out of the same total so we can look at the shape of the graph okay and we're getting to this more spread out type of uh, nice shape of the graph and that looks nice and everything 
but we'd also like to think about taking the average number this time. And so that's what we're going to do in the next one. So we're thinking about taking like our samples here, one dice versus the five dice in a statistical situation, imagining basically like infinite die, for example. And instead of basically counting the different outcomes that can be added together with the dies, we're going to count the different outcomes and we're going to divide and we're going to get the average. So now we're going to be doing a similar process, but looking at the averages of the die. So let's start this whole thing over again and we'll see, we'll plot out the graphs and we'll see the shapes as the shapes of the graphs change in this analysis. All right, so let's first think that if we have one die, obviously we, we only have one die, right? We don't have an average there. So let's think about starting with the two dice situation. So we have two dice average. That's our header. Let's make that black and white up top. We're going to go to the home tab font group. We're going to make that black and white. Do, do, do. Now we've already we've already done the the different combinations that we can have. We did that over here. So I will just copy and paste it. So I'm going to say over here we had the the red and black dice that we summed up and we said we can have this is one way we can think about it. We have the one through six opportunities on the red die and let's just put a one next to that for the black die and then a, from all the two situation we can have a one through six on the two all the threes we can have a one through six on the three all the fours and so on and so forth let's go ahead and copy this i'm going to take this whole thing and say ju -ju 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 -ju. let's just copy it and then i'm going to go back on over to the right boom 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 and we'll just paste it right there. Notice I didn't copy the whole column because I because if I copied the whole column, I would have to paste it in line one, but I just copied the actual data so I can paste it right here and it still fits. Let's make some of these a little bit skinnier. I'm gonna select columns BR to BT and make them a little bit more skinny. So there we have it. All right, and so it, instead of stopping at the sum, we're now going to take the average. So now we're going to say, all right, let's make this format paint over here. So the lowest number we can get if we have two dice and we roll two dice is that we get a number two, but we, we want to take the average. So now we're going to say this is going to be two divided by the number of dice, which are two. So divided by two and I can copy. Let's make that a format paint home tab, I'm sorry, add some decimals. Let's decimalize it because we not, might not get all even numbers here, right? And then we're going to double click on the fill handle, dragging it down. That didn't do it. I missed the fill handle. Double click the fill handle and boom. So if, if we got a three, right, we'd have to have a, a two on the red dice, one on the black dice, adds up to a three. Three divided by two dice uh, is going to give us an average of the 1.5. If we get a if we get a sum of a four, a three and a one adds up to the four. What's the average? Four divided by two dice is two. If we got a four and a one, that adds up to five. What's the average? Five divided by the two dice is going to be the 2.5. Now I had I listened to an online uh, course that explained this <laughs> in kind of a, a funny way that I thought was somewhat interesting. We can imagine, for example, these are these are the price of gas. He said, so we have the price of gas, and you can you're going to end up paying either one dollar all the way up to six dollars for the price of gas. And instead of just setting the price, you're going to roll the dice, right? So you're going to roll the dice, and the question is, what are going to be the odds that I go in, I get a gas for one dollar versus I have to pay six dollars if I have to choose my gas and then roll the dice? in order to pay, uh, see what, how much per gallon I'm going to have to pay for the gas. Right. And so that, and so if, if we had one dice, obviously when we rolled the dice, we would have a one out of six chance that we pay either $1 or $6. But then let's see how it changes. Then if we think about the average now, so now we have two dice, obviously, instead of us saying, adding the two dice together, which means we can we would end up paying like $12. We can't pay $12. That doesn't make sense. 
we want to take the average of the two dice, which will still be out of the one through six, but the prop, the odds will be different, right? That's one way to kind of look at this. So let's go ahead and say control shift down and I'm going to make this black and white. So we'll say this is going to be, I'm sorry, bordered in blue. This is bordered in blue. Not right. I'm not quite, I don't feel like I'm quite in the groove here. I keep on misstating it, but anyways, we'll, we'll make a skinny BV. I'm just cooling up, man. I'm just cooling up. People get it backwards. They think you got to warm up and cool down. It's totally backwards. You got to cool up and then warm down when you're, when you're ready to stop. So we're just cooling up right now, man. We're just cooling up. So this is, so now let's say this is going to be the bends. So, so now we're going to use a little, we're going to use a frequency in order to put these in the bends because the count is going to be more difficult to do because we don't have just straight numbers here. So, so when we think about our histogram, it would look something like this, or in other words, if I made a histogram from this, let me just show you if I took these and we said, give me a histogram. So I said, control shift down. Let's go back up and let's just go to insert and then charts. And then we're going to make a histogram. Boom. So there's going to be our, our histogram. And then I can say, this is for two dice, two dice. Da -da. And you can see the buckets down here are what we might need to kind of adjust. So I'm going to double click on the, on the buckets. And then we're going to go to the side and say, okay, the, the bend width, uh, what should the bend width be? Let's just test out a couple bend widths. What, what, what if it was 0.25? So that gives me a nice spread, but it's got these buckets that are kind of empty. So what if I said like 0.5 on it? So that gives me a decent kind of spread. So you'll recall that the buckets themselves are going to have an impact on the look of the of the histogram so that's nice but i'd also like to make my own kind of histogram because i can plot then different data points on top of it as well so there's pros and cons to using this histogram tool versus us making our own bends so let's think about our own bends and let's just let's just make the normal bends uh with whole numbers so I'm going to say it's going to go from zero to one and then from one to two and then from uh, two to three and then from three to four and four to five and then uh, five to six. Let's make this our uh, border blue or we're going to say home tab font group make this black white. Let's put some border blue around this. We're going to go then the uh, border bucket drop down. If you don't have that blue, I'm going to go into more colors. Do the Excel is fun standard color wheel blue. Boom. Again, he kind of went to the green, the Excel is fun guy, but I still like the blue. That's his, I still call it the Excel is fun blue uh, in honor of the Excel is fun guy who's the Excel champion of the world as far as I am concerned. So I'm going to then select the skinny here and we're going to say let's make a skinny go to the format painter and go to the by skinny and so so what i want to do with the frequency calculation is just all i need is the end the the end of the buckets so this is the the last number in the bins so i'm just trying to get get a feel give you an idea of how this frequency calculation works because it can be a little bit tricky. We could adjust the bends, by the way, of course, to make it one to 1 1.5 and so on and so forth. But I'm gonna just keep it with the whole numbers. And then instead of doing a count function as we did before, I'm gonna do a frequency calculation, which maybe I spelled wrong. Let me check the spelling. Check the spelling. Yeah, you spelled it wrong, idiot. Okay, there's no need to get rude let's select that and go to the home tab font group and black and white and then we can say we just need the last numbers which is going to be one to six so i'm not going to put the beginning numbers and then we'll do our frequency which is a spill array formula fancy spill array formula let's get fancy we're going fancy putting on the tuxedo here and we'll select the average column 
control shift down and so there it is and then comma and the next argument is going to be the bends so this is where the spill array is i'm just going to check take that whole array and it's going to spill it down one past that because it's going to take everything over six right so i'm going to say all right boom and so this is going to be everything that's over and obviously there is nothing over six which is kind of gives us a little bit of a double check and so there we have it so then we can say this is our totals and I can sum it up this way, alt equals, boom, we come up to the 36, control shift down, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, that comes up the count, so that gives me a double check that we've got everything included properly, so we have the 36 there. All right, uh, let's make that, let's make that uh, border blue, and home tab font group, border it, and blueify it. Excel is fun blue and then we're gonna say uh, let's make a chart from it so I'm just gonna select these ones and and uh, make a chart so I'm just gonna go insert standard bar chart because I just have the numbers one through six so that makes it easy for the bar the standard bar dropping it down bar chart which we will then switch to a line chart later and there we have it okay so do, 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 and this is going to be for uh this is for two dice average let's say like average average or let's say mean all right okay so there we have that now we can compare that to like one dice situation it, let's just put the one dice situation underneath it so if i had one dice uh one dice then the ends of the bends would be once again one two three four five six because i'm going to put them in the same number of bends but uh uh the average uh would be one sixth each right because well, let's do the whole thing i'm going to say this is going to be the percent of the total and so it would be out of one sixth the chances or likelihoods but would be one sixth each so the percent would be equal one over uh one over six and i'm going to percentify that add some decimals copy that down this equals the one above it and i'm just going to copy that let's uh form let's percentify and then copy it down and so but what i would like to be having is this out of 36 right instead of instead of out of six so we'll do our familiar little trick now i'm going to make this a little smaller and we're going to say this will be then then a adjust for i want to make it out of 36 so this is going to be equal to this percent times 36 i want to say f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter and the number so i can copy it down enter and then i can add some decimals copy that down and this will be my total total and i'll sum this up alt equals which should come out to 36. let's make this black and white uh we'll make it black white centered let's put some blue borders around it Duh. and then blue and bordered okay so there's the one die scenario let's add that to our chart up top so what i need to do is add i'm going to hit the plus button over here i want to add a legend so there it is so i can see which data is which because we're going to have two data sets chart design and then data and so the first one here i want to change the name i'm going to edit it and I'm going to change the name to be to be uh, two dice. And then I'm going to say, OK. And then I'm going to add another date, another range, which is going to be one dice, which I should say die, die. I'm not sure even how to spell die versus die. So whatever, one dice. You know what I mean? And then we're going to take this information and then OK. So there we have it. So now we can get a now we get an idea let's take this off of uh the two pictures uh and we can see what's happening to the data 
So let's map it out. Let's map down the mean down here of our two data sets. So if we have one dice, so let's say dice one versus two, let's calculate the mean and then the standard D STD of the sample, let's say of the sample. So then we can take the mean for the one dice situation or the average equals the average tab. I'm going to pick the actual data, which is the one through six, the one through six here and enter. And if I add a decimal, we're going to add a couple decimals. We get that 3.5. That's going to be the, the average. And then let's do the same thing for two dice equals the average tab. We're going to be looking at the actual data over here. So this is our average outcomes, control shift down. And then I'm going to say enter. And we should get the same number number. We're going to say it's still at the 3.5. What's going to be changing, of course, is the spread, which is measured by the standard deviation. Let's say this is going to be the standard deviation. I'm going to say of S for the sample. Imagine we're thinking about an entire infinite population of dice and we're taking a sample of one right here, right? So we're going to say this will be of these control shift down and shift back up and then enter. Let's add some decimals so we get a little bit more detail. Uh, 1.87. Let's do this one equals the standard deviate the standard STDV of S the sample. And we're going to take the data over here, the actual data to do, do, do control shift down and enter. So there we have that. Let's add some decimals. Boom, boom. And you can see that the standard deviation is uh, going down. That's what we're going to expect to see basically as a trend, meaning the bigger the sample that we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to imagine it's going to get to a more bell shaped curve, which is going to give us more exactness around the mean, which in this case is going to be the 3.5. So we expect to, what we expect to basically happen is we're going to see this kind of bell shaped shape get more defined and it get more peaked in uh, the middle. And again, the characteristics of that bell shape uh, can be quite useful for us from a statistical standpoint. So that's going to be one of the major functional benefits of this concept of the central limit theorem, especially when we're doing sampling type of situations, trying to do inductive reasoning about an entire population from some kind of uh, sample from it. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's do one more here and then we'll, we'll continue on. So let's make this one uh, black and white here, black, white. Let's make these black and white. And so there we have it. All right, I'm also going to make this blue and bordered. Border blue. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do it again. So this time we're going to take our same data. Over, well, let's put my header up top. Let's not get ahead of yourself. Don't get ahead of yourself. Average. Let's take four dice. Four uh, dice average and make that a header. So I'll make this black and white home tab font group. We're going to make it black and white. Let's go find our data that we had with the four dice scenario over here. And that's going to be do, do, do is this with a four dice one? Uh, actually, we're, we're on three dice. Let's do the three dice one. Let's take this data for the three dice. We have orange, red, black, and then the sum. I'm going to say control shift down to go all the way down to the bottom and control C copy. I will scroll back up and then go to the right and I'll fix the header in a second because we're not on four dice. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're getting ahead of yourself. And let's just paste it right there. Control V and then change this to the three dice, three dice. Okay, so there's so here's our dice. We've got the orange, red, black. The combos can be a one, 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 a one, uh, two, one, a one, three, one, a one, four, one, a one, five, one, a one, six, one, and then a one, one, two, a one, two, two. And you can see how we kind of put all the different combinations together, all the ones first for the orange dice, and then all the combos with a two for the first dice, and so on and so forth. Now we're going to be adding the col column for the average, just as we did before. 
and we'll format paint this over here. The average is now going to be equal to the sum divided by the, the, uh, the three numbers divided by three. We could also, of course, just take equals the average of these three numbers, which is going to add them up and divide by the count, which is three. Let's do that. That might be the easier way. Let's add some decimals, adding some decimals, and then double click it down. So it's just saying, okay, if you got a one, one, one divided by three dice, that's an average of one. So we imagine we go to the next gas station, right? And instead of just rolling one dice, we're in, we in taking the average or rolling two dice. Now we have three dice, right? And we roll it and we say, okay, what's the likelihood now of how much we're going to pay for the gas with three dice? Because if it was one dice, I had a one six chance to pay one, any dollar amount, one to six. But then we could see that it was a little bit more of a peaked situation with the average of two dice. And now we have the average of three dice, which we would expect the likelihood of us being closer to the mean would be, would be more likely, meaning closer to that 3.5 would be the idea. So let's see if that's the case. Control shift down. And we're gonna go to the home tab font group. And so we're gonna make it border blue. All right, so let's, let's make a skinny uh, CO. And let's do this again. So we're just going to take the bends and I'm going to say, let's put it up top this time. Bends. These are the ends of the bends and then the frequency. Let's make these black and white home tab font group, black, white, centered. The bends are going to be, I'm just going to stick with the solid numbers of one, two, down to six, even though now we have decimals that we're dealing with and averages and whatnot. So I could change the bends, but I'm going to keep it at the one through six. And then let's do the frequency equals the frequency. These are the ends of the bends. And so now I'm going to take my data. This is a spill array function. Control shift down, control backspace back to the top, comma, to get to the second argument, which are the bends. These are the ends of the bends and then enter. It spills or raises it down. This is the amount that's over six. There should not be any. That's kind of our check figure, getting a total of alt equals 216, which should be the total number of outcomes that we can get. Control shift down uh, 216. That's the count of all of them, which you can also get to by just saying, well, there's three dice, which would be equal to six times six times six, or equal to six carat uh, which is to the power of three, right? Two ways to get to that same number. So that's our double check. Looks MUI B to the end. Let's go ahead and select these items. Home tab, font group, border, and blue. So there we have that. Let's first think about the histogram. Let's say I could just make a histogram with this. Control shift down and go to the insert tab and go to the, is that insert? Yeah, go to the charts and add a histogram. Let's scroll back up before I add it because it's going to be at the bottom if I don't do that. And then we're going to go to the histogram. Let's put that histogram in. And we're going to say this is for the three dice. Now we can mess with the with the uh, buckets down below and just let's just play with them and see what would be a good bucket size. I'm going to go to my data axis and then my bin width. So we could say, like, what if it was like 0 0.2? Well, then we have a lot of, that looks kind of nice spread, but we got a lot of space in between the buckets, like 0.3. And that looks pretty nice, but you got this weird thing happening here, like maybe three, five. And so that looks pretty nice, right? And then we also might add to the, to these, our data. So I could say, right click on the data, add the data labels maybe. And so then it gives me my numbers. So this, so we're about the 3.5. We're hovering around that 3.5 and we get this nice shape that we're kind of expecting to be happening as we go forward. All right, let's, now let's make, a, make our own histogram, but let's do it. We'll make the line chart and then we'll make it as a bar chart and then convert it to a line chart. So let's try that. So I'm gonna say, let's take these numbers and I don't need the zero, I don't think. And let's just go to insert 
and we'll make a normal bar chart again. Boom, this is for three dice, bam. And the numbers are just one, two, three, four, five, six. That's why that kind of work, the numbering system over here is the same. So we'll just keep it like that. That's nice and easy. And then I can compare that to the one dice situation and the two dice situation and so forth. So let's go ahead over here and copy that same stuff. So I'm, this was my two dice. Let's copy that. Let's copy the whole thing. I'm gonna go from here down to the one dice and adjust these so that instead of it being out of 36, it'll be out of our new total of 216. So we have some comparable data. So I'm gonna put that here, control uh, paste, and then I'll paste it one, two, three values only so that it doesn't, so that I don't get any um, formulas that might mess us up. All right, so then I'm gonna say, this will be the percent of the total, percent of total. And so our total is the 36. I'm gonna say home tab font, let's make it format paint. Let's take the one over 36. And then I want this 36 not to move down when I copy it down. Therefore F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number and enter. And then we'll percentify to recognize and then add some decimals. And then let's double click to drop it down. And then I'm gonna delete that bottom bit because I wanna sum it up this way, Alt equals to double check that we do indeed get the 100%. Then I wanna adjust it to make it out of 216 using the same ratios so that we can compare it and have the same kind of area under the graph, right? So I'm gonna say this will be equal to the, let's do it this way, this times the 216 that 216, I don't want it to move down when I copy it down. Therefore, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number and enter. Add some decimals, boom, boom. Copy it down, double click to throw it on down. And let's go here and then center that, format paint it, take it to the right, Alt Enter for the summing to get back to the 216. That's what we expected it to be. Mui B to the end, B in looks good. Let's make this home tab font group bordered and blue. Let's do a similar thing to this one where I'm gonna say instead of it being out of 36 now, I want it to be out of 216. And so I'm just gonna say, this is gonna be equal to this times the 216 F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, enter, double click to drop it down. Not to the bottom though, because I wanna alt enter on that one to double check my total, matches up, and there we go. So now let's add these two sets of data to this one. First adding our, our legend. This chart is a legend in the making. And then we're gonna go to the chart design data and I'm gonna edit this series first, edit it to give it a name, which I'm gonna call three dice and then okay. And then I'm gonna add a whole nother set of data, which is I'm gonna call two dice and then make sure I go down here, delete the stuff in it and then add the two dice stuff down here, not including the total. I'll just go down to here, that's all I need. And then okay and then Uno vase moss one more time, adding another one with one dice, making sure to go down here and delete the stuff before you click away. And then we're gonna pick the 36 and okay, boom. And so there we have it. So now you can kind of see the comparison with, with similar numbers as we take the average. Now it's getting a little ugly with the bar charts. So let's convert it from a bar chart to a, uh, a line charts. So I'm gonna click on the chart, chart design, change the chart type. Let's make it lines instead of bars. And so we can just go boom, okay. So there we have it. So you can see what's happening here. We've, and, and notice I'm still keeping the static one, two, three, four, five, six. If I changed the, the bends, you're gonna get something a little bit more like that. So you can kind of play with the bends that you wanna, that you can, you can play with. But the point is that you had something that was a little bit 
uh, this one is aligned, then we have something that's a little bit more spread out here and it's starting to get more peaked is what we're seeing uh, on, on this one. And that's the general idea. So let's do the calculations say, okay, well, what is happening? When we went from dice, from one dice to two dice to three dice, we have the mean and we've got the standard deviation STD of, let's say, the sample. And so the mean, I'm going to say of one dice, is going to be the average tab of the actual data for one dice, which I'm just going to take the one through six, control shift down, shift up to not pick up the total. That's going to be, of course, the 3.5, adding the decimal to see the 0.5. We'll take the average here equals the average of the two dice. I'm going to look for the actual data, which you'll recall was over here with the two dice scenario. So I'm just going to pick up the data again. Here's the data for the two dice. Control shift down, enter. And once again, that should be going towards the 3.5. And then the three dice equals the average tab. And that's going to be the actual data over here that we took the averages of them. Control shift down, enter. And once again, you get that mean of the 3.5. But the standard deviations are going to change equals the standard deviation of the population, the STD, uh, hold on, Stand, yeah, that's right, S of the population is going to be these for the one dice, or actually these, one through six. And then let's add some decimals. Do, do, and then for the two dice equals the standard deviation of the, of the sample dot S. I'm going to say for the two dice is over here with the actual data of the two dice, which is way over here. And I can say control shift down doo -doo, and enter. So there's the standard div for the two dice. Doo -doo, and then for the three dice, the standard div of the sample of the three die actual data do, 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 control shift down boom and so adding some decimals boom boom and we can see what's happening here we have that same middle point but the standard deviation is getting smaller which of course means that it's getting tighter around that central point we're looking at less spread that is happening so if we were to roll three dice and take the average to pay for our gas then if the three dice is going to give us a more a price that's more likely to be around the mean of the 3.5 whereas if i will if i roll one dice or two dice then i'm 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 less likely to get that middle number and i could win i could get a lower number i'm more likely to get a lower number but i'm also more likely to get the higher number so it's basically ma measuring how much confidence or how much risk in this case uh, we want to be taking uh, do we want to go, go to the gas station where you roll one dice, have a likelihood of getting a one, but also a pretty high likelihood of getting a six? And, or do we want to go to the gas station that you roll three dice where you have a much more likely probability of paying about the average price of the 3.5 and less probability to get that good price of one and, uh, or, the, or less probability getting hit with that high price of six, right? <laughs> So, those are those, so let's go ahead and make this uh, home tab font group. Let's make this uh, black and white. And then we can make these black and white. Do, do, and then let's make this blue and bordered, bordered and blue. And I'll bring this one up a bit. So next time we'll do the, we'll do, we'll finish it off with going from three dice to four dice and then to five dice and, uh, as we do this, we'll kind of, again, practice our histograms and then practice having multiple graphs on one space and line graphs versus bar graphs. And then you can also imagine how you might change uh, your, your frequency buckets if you wanted to change your, uh, the, the, your, your graph that you have more control over with a line graph or possibly using another graph format where you can plot the X and the Ys which would be something like the scatter graphs over here.